Mr. Chair and members, Senate Bill 1084 appropriates $200 million from the State General Fund to the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund in fiscal year 2024. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Members have any questions for Jen? All right. Seeing none, let's tackle this issue here. So we have the Health Innovation Trust Fund. We've um, you have some uh, items being given to you right now that I just got my eyes on yesterday, the new updated um, uh, trust fund and what we have been using it for uh, over the last uh, a few years. And I could think of no one better than uh, uh, Joan uh, Corver Walker to come up and tell us about all the exciting things that she has been doing and that her member partners have been doing. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Joan Kerber Walker. I currently serve as the president and CEO of the Arizona Bio Industry Association and the chairman of the Opportunity Through Entrepreneurship Foundation. Um, we're deeply appreciative, Senator Shope, for your um, bringing this bill forward and for being its champion and also for including Senator Gowan as your co-sponsor as he began this process last year. Um, the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund was developed um, by the legislature specifically to address the challenge that while we've invested significantly in health innovation over the last two decades, we're not moving as quickly forward as we need to for our patients or for our economy. And so, um, as I've had conversations with members of the committee, $200 million is a lot of money. But when we put it in perspective of the investments that we have already made in the research and development to make the discoveries to hopefully create the treatments and cures that will benefit all of us as Arizonans, um, it, it's a very, very small number. So there's been over $25 billion invested over the last 20 years into the research discoveries, the developments, the universities, TGen, all of the different things to discover these health innovations. Bringing them forward can also cost billions of dollars. And we rely on private investment to do that. But doing the bridge of the very, very early investment requires a trained workforce, trained entrepreneurs, and a little bit of help. The Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund was developed to do that. And so um, we sincerely hope that you will continue this process and help Arizona reach its potential of becoming a top 10 bioscience state. What that means is today we're number 20. The economic impact on the state in 2021 was $38 billion. If we are able to achieve top 10 status by continuing to invest in our early innovations, we can double that number because that's where the number 10 state is today. So we do have some health innovators here that will be testifying. And in the essence of time, I reserve um, for any questions. Members have any questions? Thank you for being here, Joan. Thank Don't you. go too no. far. Okay. Next up, we have Tom Eisminger. Please correct me if I said that incorrectly. Uh, he doesn't care. He's just happy German. to stretch his legs. You must be German. <laughs> you got that right. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak in support of Senate Bill 1084. For the record, my name is Tom Eisminger, Jr., and I am the CEO and president of Regenesis Biomedical, a Scottsdale-based medical device company currently focused on pain management. Our primary source of business is with the Veterans Health Administration, serving our nation's veterans. Our company is an Arizona-based health innovator focused on becoming the diabetic foot company, treating not only the pain associated with peripheral diabetic neuropathy, but also the prevention and treatment of the diabetic foot ulcers associated with the disease process. With our 50 employees based in Arizona, we're literally bootstrapping our efforts to bring this technology to the greater market, relying solely on organic sales revenue 
to fund our innovation efforts. The Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund will help to expedite these types of innovative technologies, create Arizona-based jobs, including high-tech jobs, and will bring greater investment into the state. I also serve as the president of a local veterans nonprofit, the Veterans Medical Leadership Council. We work with the VA Medical Centers in Phoenix and Prescott to help veterans that are on the verge, on the verge of becoming homeless, on the verge of unemployment, and in extreme cases on the verge of suicide. We do this by bridging the gap between existing resources and what state and federal government programs currently cannot fund. <clears throat> when COVID began, we started a program on the Navajo Nation helping with sustainment relief by providing 52 helicopter loads of PPE, 25 tractor trailer loads consisting of 1,500, 300 gallon water tanks uh, to help veterans and their families with enough water to last a week. We seconds. recently provided 15 solar refrigerators to Navajo veterans who are insulin dependent and don't have electricity to store their life-saving insulin. With 50% of the Navajo either pre-diabetic or diabetic, our Regenesis technology has the potential to extend lives and provide more active and fulfilling life. Thank you for the opportunity to speak in support of SB 1084. This one-time investment will help more companies like ours start and grow here in Arizona, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Members have any questions? Thank you very much. Next. Stephen Johnston. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, um, thank you very much for allowing me here to speak in strong support of SB 1084. For the record, I'm Stephan Albert Johnston. I'm testifying as self. Um, I work for Calvary and I'm the CEO there. Calvary is an ACE, uh, Arizona biotech company. It's a spinoff of uh, ASU. Um, Calvary's aim is to produce diagnostics and vaccines to prevent, prevent cancer, chronic diseases, and aging. Now, I, I know this sounds pretty amazing and maybe even impossible, but we are currently in the midst of an 800-dog clinical trial, the largest in the world that's ever been done, uh, to test our vaccine to see if we can do just that. Um, and uh, preliminary efficacy results are very encouraging. We're seeing a reduction in malignant and tumor uh, occurring in our dogs. We're seeing 85% reduction in chronic disease deaths. And we're seeing a 38% increase in longevity. So all of this is very encouraging. Um, we're pretty confident that if this works in dogs, it will work in people. In fact, we expect it to work even better. We're starting on a version two of the dog vaccine for commercialization. Uh, this year, uh, and after sitting through the, today's hearings, I promise you that we will not recommend, they, recommend that this vaccine be mandated for either people or dogs. <laughs> um, but it took us 15 years to get here, working in, in Arizona all this time. And I can tell you frankly, if we were in San Diego, Boston, or even Madison, Wisconsin, it would have been much easier than it has been here. So that's why I strongly support SB 104084 because I think we need to make it a lot easier for companies to start, mature, and stay in Arizona. Uh, thank you very much. I'd be glad to answer questions. Well, this is obviously an active listener. Uh, members, any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for being here. That is it. Uh, members, any further discussion on the issue? I would, the only thing I would point out is that obviously before we do take a vote, I don't want the number to scare anyone away. Obviously, this goes straight to appropriations, and it goes right into that budget box that I joked that Mr. Kavanaugh has a huge padlock, probably a combination lock on as well. Um, and uh, we all see how this stuff turns out at the end of the day. Uh, many of the things that we do with those numbers are very are aspirational goals. And we hope to get as close as we can as possible, but ultimately that decision will unfortunately be made in probably June. So, 
Um, point, Mr. Mr. Borelli. Yes, to that point, uh, Mr. Chair, Senator C C Kavanaugh camps on that button. I, that is also true, yes. So the that, way he lives in, in, I'll give you his address, you can go down there. Yeah. <laughs> Madam Vice Chair, please move the bill. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move Senate Bill 1084 with a due pass recommendation. There are no amendments. Uh, members, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, Secretary, please call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chair, may I explain the vote? Please. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I've said it once, I'll say it again. The first cost of freedom is taking care of our veterans. I vote aye. 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 Members by your vote of seven nine zero nine zero, uh, zero not voting. You've given seven a bill ten eighty four. You do pass a recommendation. Let's 